do not have enough space at the FBA fulfillment centers for your inventory and think they're not giving you enough space? Well, thankfully, they do allow you to bid for increases in the amount of space you can actually have in the warehouse. My name is Noah. I'm with my Amazon guy, and we're going to walk you through exactly how to actually get more capacity at the Amazon warehouse. So first off, let's start off in Seller Central. We'll head on over to the hamburger in top left, go to inventory, and then FBA inventory. Once we're at FBA inventory, I like to go to manage shipments and down at the bottom here, you'll see this capacity monitor. We'll click this and it'll say down here, need to increase capacity limit, go to capacity manager. So for the capacity manager, we have all of the different types and sizes of product. Once we're actually here, you can see for September, we have 2076, October 1055, and then November 926. If this is not going to be enough, so let's say you're planning on having a lot more inventory in for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you can always create a new request. This will have the capacity limit increase request pop up, and you can look at how much it's going to cost you. So first and foremost, let's click November, and you have a few different things here. You have your requested volume. This is based on how large your product is. So how much space cubic foot wise does your product take up? and how much can you actually store? So this is where you should be requesting volume. You should have a decent idea of this based on how much inventory you currently have in versus how much inventory uh, overall you're actually taking up at the moment. Next, we have our maximum reservation fee. This is the maximum fee you are willing to pay for the increased inventory limits. Now, this will come into play, and again, this is not something that you necessarily will have to pay, but it's the amount you could potentially pay. Next, we have our calculate your maximum reservation. So first off, we'll download our reservation fees. So this will show us the historical for how much people have been typically paying for increased uh, storage limits based on a cubic foot again. So you can see for November, even as early as August, some people are paying $3.51 for it, and then other people are paying $1.56. So it has a wide range, and you can see for October as well, People are paying anywhere from, you know, 10 cents to two bucks. So it really depends, 250 even, uh, when people are putting in the request and how much space there really is to allocate. So if we head back here, you can also see the download calculator tool. So I'll pull that up right now. So a few things to notice with this. We have three different sections. We have our capacity information. We have our recommended maximum reservation fee. Then we have our estimate performance credit payments. So first and foremost, storage type, we will choose our standard size. Our base, which we know for November, is going to be 926. Our requested capacity limit increase. Now you can request up to 2,500 cubic feet of extra capacity. Let's say that for all intents and purposes, we need an extra 500. Now this is one of the important parts, which is your estimated sales for the target period. So this is going to depend highly, again, on how much you're going to be actually selling for these different dates. So let's assume that you're selling a product for, I don't know, $10 and you're planning on selling, uh, you know, I don't know, a thousand, 10,000 units. So let's say we're going to have a hundred thousand uh, dollars in sales for this target period. Now this inputs some information down step two. We have our capacity limit again, which includes both the base and the requested. Then we have our increase ratio. So this is the ratio of how much based on the requested capacity. Sales qualified for performance credit. So this comes from how much we're thinking we're gonna have in sales, and then how many of our sales are actually going to qualify for the performance credit. So this is prorated based off of your increase ratio. Now we have our estimated performance credits, which is 5,259. Uh, this is essentially how much Amazon is going to credit you in overall storage fees if you hit this sales number. So this then tells us what we should be putting for our actual uh, per unit or per cubic foot reservation fee. You can see this is quite high. Now, why is this high? The reason it's so high is because again, we are thinking we're gonna have 100,000 sales, which is you know roughly where we would be. We're asking for 500 square feet. So let's say we were going to do something like uh, you know, 250,000. You can see how this number gets higher, the higher this goes. The reason for that is because we are asking for more and we're still going to be doing volume. If I increase the requested capacity, 
the number gets much lower. And that is because, again, we essentially 10x to this. So we'd probably be paying more at the end of the day at this fee. Now, let's say we put this down to 1,000. And we're only asking for 500. It's going to say 11 cents. Now, the point of this being is that you'll see down here where the uh, performance credits would end up being. So you can see if sales are below estimate, so if we're below this by 20%, we will end up paying the full amount of the reservation fee. Uh, whereas if sales are above, we end up not paying it. Now, this is where the reservation fee really takes place. Essentially, again, if we come back here, let's say we're going to do 500. Now, let's say we did do 11 cents. We would have to pay an extra 55 bucks on top of the regular storage fees that we normally do. Now, the best thing, in my opinion, when you are looking at how to do a reservation fee would be typically to go off of the actual historics. We know how much other people are paying, so we would want to say, let's do a dollar fifty-six. It's going to cost us seven eighty. So we understand how much people are paying, and we understand uh, essentially how much it's going to cost us for something like this. This reservation fee is based on the idea that we don't sell through all of that product essentially. So for expiration date of request. This is going to depend heavily on when you are expecting to sell through all of your products. So if you think that your product is going to sell through, uh, you know, within the entire month uh, and be able to be shipped out then for the entire month again, I would typically do it for that date. So you could see they are a gray out November or the first three days and then all of November. The purpose of this is let's say it takes you uh, an extra three weeks to restock after you sell through. In that case, you would want to make sure the last date you can have this for the request before it can get approved would be 1013. That is because you want to be able to create that shipment for this by that date. And if you don't create it by then, you know you're not going to be able to put the inventory in for that month and you don't want to be charged for it. So by and large, if you're not going to end up using it, then you end up wanting to have the expiration day of the request very soon. If you end up having it be something where you're unsure, just create it further out than when you need. Again, the last day that you can have it would be the 28th, three days before the month. So at the end of the day, the worst case scenario, you could do it the 28th. And then if you have to have the inventory in, you can. Otherwise, it will just expire. So hopefully this gave a little bit better understanding. What I would typically, again, go after is more often than not what the historical reservation fees have been for what other people are paying. Because again, when you are asking and requesting more space, you are bidding against other people for that same space. Amazon does not have to give you more space. And so typically speaking, when you go off of something like their calculator, uh, if we come back here where it's saying, you know, 11 cents for uh, the actual storage space, this typically, in my opinion, has never been 100% accurate. I typically find that it's usually going to be much lower than what you would need to actually be allotted that space a lot, uh, especially during high sales volumes like Q4 and Black Friday.